Previously, we created a mini to-do list from one of our to-do items. We completed a couple of items in that list, but we still have the following left. We have to show a countdown timer, and then we have to start the game. Okay, let's look at the first item. Since the game is named Time Fighter, there needs to be some sort of time limit. That's where the countdown timer comes into play, since that limits the amount of time you have to increase the score. To do this, we're going to create a countdown timer object, which, surprise, surprise, manages our countdown. To get started, I have my project open to my main activity. Let's add a few properties to the main activity to keep track of the game state and countdown timer. Game started is a Boolean flag, that is, it's a true or false value indicating the game has started. You'll understand why you need this in a bit. The other properties all relate to the countdown timer. A countdown object named countdown timer is for you to race against. These variables are a type of long. A long is like an integer, except it can contain a really high number. To use the countdown timer, we have to import it, but if we select the type from the code completion, the code is automatically added. The countdown value is used to indicate the length of the countdown and a countdown interval variable to indicate the rate at which the countdown will decrement. The last two values are in milliseconds, so your countdown timer would actually have a 60 second countdown and it will count down one second at a time. Now let's add a method to configure the game starting conditions. This method gets called each time the game starts, so it has to handle restarts as well. That's why you reset the score to zero at the top of the method, since after the first run, you would have some sort of score. Basically, this method sets everything up for your game to have a consistent default state when the game starts. You should be familiar with the score setting code, since you've seen it a couple of times now. The next bit, setting the initial timer, is very similar. The only difference is that you calculate a value from the initial countdown, which is in milliseconds, to get a value in seconds. The forward slash indicates a division operation and that you are simply dividing the millisecond value by a thousand to get a value in seconds, since a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. Next comes the big block of code for reset game. Here you create an instance of the countdown timer class. You specify how long the timer should run, as well as the time interval at which the timer should decrement. You pass in the variables you set as properties for the class that way. If you later want to change either of these values, you make the change only in one place. The countdown timer object contains two methods in it. The default implementation contains certain methods which can be overridden or customized to provide additional functionality. Of the two methods, onTick is called every time interval, and that interval is what you passed into the timer when you created it. In this case, it's one second. This method simply updates time left text view with how much time is left. You call on finish when the countdown timer has finished counting down. This is where you would handle the end of the game, but we'll get to that in a bit. Overriding some of these methods are mandatory. For example, try removing the three lines of code for on finish, since that method does nothing at the moment.
You'll notice that Android Studio complains about a missing class implementation. Once you restore it, the error will go away. Finally, you set Game Starter to false to indicate that the game has not started yet. Why do we do that? Shouldn't the game start when Reset Game is called? Well, you could do it that way too, depending on what you want to do, but in this particular instance, we want Reset Game to simply set up the conditions for the start of the game. The player has to explicitly start the game by tapping the Hit Me button after that. Your code will compile fine and run on the simulator, but nothing will change at this point. Your text view still says time left percent %s. Just writing a method is not enough. You need to call it from somewhere in order for the code to execute. In this case, you'll notice that the method name resetGame is in gray, indicating that the method is not called from anywhere. Now let's think of a good place to call this method. If you thought on create, well, give yourself a prize. Remember how when you added some code to initialize the initial score in onCreate? Since reset game also sets up the initial score display, you can replace the line of code you added in the challenge with a simple call to reset game. Try running your game now. The initial screen looks much better. The score displays correctly and the time left displays a value too, but the timer still does not update after you tap the hit me button. To find out why and how to fix it, watch the next video.